It's the tripod. It's tripod. a full tripod. How we're doing it? We're really doing it. What is good? We're back. <laughs> All three of us, and we're going to do the fastest three minutes in football. The Raiders. Berman's awesome, but he's struggling, huh? <laughs> I mean, he's... I think he's just... Oh, it's the same Berman. The way Herman. he says the Raiders, it just gets me inside every time. Oh, for sure. I mean, the three minutes is good, but like that one minute before he started the three minutes, I thought he was, had something <laughs> in his throat. And I was like, man, you need to clear that thing up. But then Simmons he got, is he old. cleared it with the Raiders. Yeah. <laughs> That's why it's him so far, soon off the rip. He's like, Starts with the Raiders. Starts with the Raiders. You need to get a sound bite of that. How are we doing today, boys? Good call. Good call. Everybody's good? Better than you. What's wrong with me? I don't know. You're just, just grinding away on your own house. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean. Working for yourself. Yeah. For no money. Making negative <laughs> money right now. Negative money. Going backwards. Yeah. It's not the best feeling in the world. Every once in a while, I stop and look around, and I'm like, huh, oh, I'm, I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> not to mention your tub drain stopped up. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Anyhow. Casey's moving in with me. We're, uh, we're out of the foundation. We're building walls. We're about to tear the roof off this weekend metaphorically and uh figuratively <laughs> um so you get a shot of you being like this as it, yeah as it comes off it's coming around i've seen some pictures i need to stop by so with that without further ado let's let's get rolling today actually let's take some ado we've been we've been talking More ado. we've been More talking ado. a little uh before, off camera here is it is it is it flats or is it drums what are you going with drums Ooh. Well, Casey said all flats. Got I like. I, I may flats I mean, are the ones you got to rip apart. You don't have to rip apart no. if you know how to eat them. Wait, 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 wait. You know how to eat them. Who you doesn't just, want to rip the two legs what? apart? What? It's so that's no. sensual. Mm, that's mm. <laughs> feel a little dirty and good like at the that. same no, you, time. You got to rip that thing down up a little bit. And yeah, it's clean. It's, ah, you got to rip. It. I like. Give me two drumsticks and ten flats. Okay, so all drumsticks, majority flats. If I would prefer mostly flats, I like the cook surface to get a little crispier and, and leave out the big fat, like like oh we got the biggest wings in town. Not going there. No, get the fuck away from me. Yeah, I need I need a, 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 a reasonably sized wing that doesn't look like it has hormones or steroids in it. Give me the regular chicken wings. Agree. And uh, let me get them flats. But I do like the, if I could do if I could <laughs> give me two drumsticks. I pay a little extra to flats. get. To get 10 flats, and I like the two drums. Mm-hmm. I like a yeah, little give drum. You a little, give you a little drumstick yeah. to nibble on. I mean, it's got to get. There's more meat on the drum. You got to go all drum. Mm-hmm. I'm not eating wings for the meat because I'll order 12 more if I need yeah, more it's meat. A delicacy. Yeah. If they're, if they're done right. I, there's no taste difference you said here. All drums, so you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> all drums, baby. Mm. You don't know. If you're given the option, I don't know that I've ever been given the option. Well, what the hell would they do with all the drums? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, the they're always squeezing some tiny, what do you call it, a flat? Yeah. I don't even know that's drums, what it's called. Get the smart guys in there eating all the flats and you have, a, have a, a sale on drums because they just got a whole bunch of drumsticks hanging around and all the flats are gone. You got to rip the legs open. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Mm. All right, so... <laughs> Go ahead and subscribe for more content yeah, like this. More of that stuff. Make sure that comes straight to your little fingertips there. We have completed the ado process. And as always, you know, our partners over at Thrive, go ahead and download that app, Thrive Fantasy. Little little prop tournament action for you. A lot of good time. Use promo code the FF Dynasty, all caps. Uh, That's not the promo code. It's the FFD. It's right there on the screen. You're right. You're right. The FFD. All caps. All the caps. FFD. Holler at your boys. We'll hit you with a read later. Let's get right into the topic numero uno. What to expect when you're expecting. Depends on your wife. Mm, fair enough. So this is the portion of the show where we're going to do at, over, <laughs> or under expectations. Uh, we're going to start most weeks off just like this. Go around the room. Gives us a chance to pick three teams. Kind of quickly digest. We'll typically try to keep them different so we can get nine quick talking points. And, and you know, maybe throw in a little fantasy as well. But... Uh, kind of give you a little bit of a landscape around the league here, how we're feeling. What do you got, Jay Wayne? Me first? Yeah, sure. You're first in the order of the show sheet here. So <laughs> going, we're going. Well, you we set it up. We can each do over. You know, I don't have to go all through mine. Okay. okay. My first over. I got to go with the Panthers. Over right. expectations. Boys, slap the Saints. Lightning fast, big black cat. <laughs> <laughs> 
sold out enthusiastic home crowd. Cool graphic. Yeah. You see that? You that. see that metal tiger that just ran all around the stadium? <laughs> yeah, that was pretty, pretty <laughs> sick. Now, I don't know if it was more the Panthers or more Jameis, but man, Ooh. they held him to eleven of twenty-two if, if for you could 111 bring up yards. Currently, a text from Big Co that said you're leaving <laughs> points on the board <laughs> by not starting Jameis Winston. I was you'd big time. <laughs> Got to start pleading Jameis. for them to start Jameis over Ryan Tannehill in one of our leagues, and Jameis. Didn't do so hot. Did not do so hot. He did um, Jameis things. But Carolina did look good. And Tannehill threw for like 350 yards and should have been a touchdown to Julio. That was ridiculous. Oh, yeah. I don't under What is that rule? Like if, if your toes come if down. If both of your toes were on the sideline there and you would have caught it and your whole body would have fallen out of bounds, they would have called that a touchdown. But since you've had one complete foot in, a toe came down inbounds first, and then your heel came out of bounds. That's not a touchdown. How does that make any sense? Which I would argue that the heel didn't even come down out of bounds. It looked like there was a sliver of grass between the heel and the fucking out of bounds line. The catch, no catch, drains me. Dra- absolutely. And it was draining. ruled on the field a catch. Right. You, you, when you watch it, does it look like a catch? Right. Then it's a catch. <laughs> if, if you're getting down to freeze frame millimeters. What what, what, I mean, what was the call inches, on the field? What was the call on the field? Exactly. It if it's no touchdown. catch, it's no catch. Yeah. That's fine. If it was a catch, it was a catch. Uh, the so, replay, catch, no catch stuff. I just can't. Panthers, I like that. Over expectations. Christian McCaffrey's been good. Sammy D has been been strong. Uh, you got to get Sammy in the lineup if 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 you're uh, kind of in the low end streaming, moving around quarterback situation. Sure, good for Sammy D coming in, getting away from Adam Gates. But I, the biggest thing for me with the I've seen all these. Uh, shots and stuff on Twitter of the the exoticness of the Panthers defense obviously mm-hmm. it was a you know last year they had all, all D all the draft. these 20 year old rookies they all you know all defense in the draft year before last and just bringing in a whole new group of defense and whoever I don't even know who their defensive coordinator is but the drawing up some some big time blitzes and then messed up the Jets week one and then obviously screwed up Jameis week two I can see there was a now hindsight 2020 with a hurricane and everything and the big blowout win of the Packers for the Saints. The letdown spot was obvious. I took the Panthers plus three in the contest. I mean, them boys had Ian Book out there running assistant uh, coaching stuff over there because they had they were missing a bunch of guys due to COVID. And then they had a, a decent amount of injuries from week one to week two, whether the center Davenport, uh, I don't think Marcus Lattimore played. I could be wrong, though, with a lot of injuries. So Yeah, I mean, t- take nothing away from the Panthers by talking about all the problems that the Saints had. Panthers looking looking nice. I mean, 2-0 and is not going to get you into playoffs, but the Panthers, considering where they were last year and the complete reboot and now bringing in Sam And a D, new quarterback, yeah. Good for them. I like that. It was extra good over there, JW. Um, JW. Stole Sammy D for a second-round pick. Uh, I'm going to go with the Texans, even though they took a loss, but – the Texans, I, I I had a phone conversation with Big Co before the season started. Like, yeah, I, you know, I, everyone's really bagging on the Texans. They're going to be the worst team in the league. I'm going to go ahead and say that they're not going to be the worst team. They could be pretty decent. They got uh, some veterans. I told Ke- I Ty thought, Rod. I thought Casey was. <laughs> Ty God. I thought Casey was smoking something. <laughs> Brandon mean, Cooks. I mean, he might have been, but that doesn't make him wrong. He, we had his conversation. <laughs> I, I left t- the Texans for dead. See, I was so right. The year before, when the when the Miami Dolphins traded away their left tackle, and they were just tanking for Tua, and I I had this huge bet week one on the Ravens, and like this whole like off season of the teams quitting and it, the morale and everything, it just went so right for me with the doubt with the Dolphins. I was like, it's happening to the Texans right here, and then. Like you said, I mean, if maybe if, if Tyrod doesn't get hurt, maybe they're two and zero. Oh. Right. I mean, that's what I was. That, that's my over. Because if if Ty God, the original Konami uh, cheat code there, <laughs> not um, original, but no. he was he's at least in the new era of fantasy, he was that OG uh, True. cheat code. Um, and he I saw him in the preseason. He was out running people on on third downs, so getting around like, DNs, and playing so very like. little limited snaps. Like right. they knew. He was right. good. Let's get him off the field. you knew they wanted to pound it, and you knew they had a pretty decent offensive line. Uh, all of a sudden, there, there's some good pieces along there, and they just had a lot of veterans on defense and, and three running backs that could all get the job done. Uh, so uh, I kind of I left it. him for dead. Yeah. I left him for dead. But definitely over expect. I didn't oh. see this coming. I thought they would be in some games, be better than people thought. But they, if without the, the Browns, better be praying to little baby Jesus that. Thanking at this little, point. Little baby Jesus. Past Jesus. Since it happened. Right. They yeah. won. Yeah. Little baby manger. That, that, that yeah. That Ty God didn't finish that game because he looked like he was on revenge tour for the Browns. 
Like, mm. watch this shit. I forgot about I forgot that. that. Missed that spot. Uh, Wouldn't have worked right, out because he got, got hurt, but... I like, I mean, put a cap on that. The Browns are so much past over-expectation. Uh, not the Browns. The um, Texans. Texans. I, I had them playing like a middle school team to start the season. And wait, good, good for the Texans. Good for a bunch of professionals to come together and act like professionals because I didn't, didn't have it. I didn't have that jotted down. Um, my, we're going over still? Yeah. Um, the Raiders. The Raiders. The Raiders. The Raiders. Um, you know, this, the honorable mention to me was the Texans just because at this point, like even let's say the Texans started 4-0, you're still not, they're not a threat. Right, it just it would have been the best story in history of the NFL mm-hmm. as far as a team that shouldn't have won winning. They'll shoot themselves but in the foot. Nobody would have been. Scared. Owner doesn't want this happening. Exactly. That's for yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody. He's like somebody sniper so tie like, rod. The Raiders. So can we puncture his lung or something. Right. Goddamn it. The Raiders <laughs> are decent enough to make it. Them to that they are a threat. I mean, they're pro- they're not going to go deep in the playoffs or anything. But they've beaten the Ravens and the Steelers. And for them to go and beat the Steelers on the road, on the road. East yeah. Coast, one o'clock after the overtime victory craziness, that was the first game in their brand new stadium where they actually had fans, and I'm sure they had the greatest party ever afterwards. And then for them to get it back together, travel. go to Pittsburgh, travel across country, get that W. And Supposed to be a big letdown spot, gambling shoot. wise, all sorts. Oh of yeah, things. the Steelers were the pick. Steelers were the pick because the the Raiders just couldn't. Bad spot. Got couldn't up, get up. There's no way they could get up for that game, and they went into Pittsburgh and won, and uh, won fairly decisively. Sometimes um, you got to get up to get down. And so the Raiders got Derek down. Carr was actually pushing the ball down the field. I mean, he pushed the ball down the field last year too. He's, so nobody's even close. He's got like 800 yards passing, and the next per- closest person has like 600. Yeah, he's Skyler. rolling. He's, he's rolling, slaying it. And right then uh, there's been a lot of talk the last couple of days. I mean, Gus Bradley's come in there and turned that defense around. So my overs the Raiders. Uh, I would I would have taken the Raiders. For sure, uh, but since you picked him, I want Texans. Gotcha. All right, but, all right, uh, Jay Wayne, what do you got uh, on the at expectation level here? I'm going to go with the Denver Broncos. I'd call them slightly above. I don't know if I. Well, you could it was the pre- Jags. I, you could argue they're above expectations for sure, but just it was just right? the Jags. They are two and zero, but it was just the Jags that they beat this week. So yeah. I don't want to go. That, that, they, they they handled the Jags. That was what they expect to do. Teddy's on fire. Uh, well, you expect it now because you got Teddy, who's nice and steady, steady Teddy, steady Teddy. If he's always been steady, Lock, but actually, he's 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 pushing the ball down yeah, the field. Drew he Lock was just peppering Cortland Sutton. He's back, baby. Cortland Sutton. That's mostly why I wanted to bring them up because I just want to bring Sutton up. And he, I was just he was missing. They were just just missing on a bunch of stuff. And I'm like, man, Cortland Sutton, if he. Maybe he could have like a quiet day and then you could go pick him up. But then he just Didn't do it. continued to hit him downfield. And then they started connecting and it was like vintage Cortland Sutton, massive targets, long air yards or whatever. A dot had to have been out of control. Mm-hmm. Not something you would think of for a steady Teddy. Javante Williams was looking rock solid. Like Melvin Gordon's doing his thing, but Javante looks borderline untackable, yeah. tackleable at times. Yeah, it's it's nice. You, you you gotta. It's you know. I know you don't. For if you're a Javante believer and drafter, you don't want uh, Melvin Gordon Melvin to be Gordon so good to be around. But the fact that they're you know both kind of in the fold, pretty decent. It's great for amount, the team. Is, is good for your. I feel like it's best. I mean, obviously, the best case scenario for Javante Williams would be that he's just so much better than Melvin. But Melvin looks good, and he's they're kind of splitting things and both looking pretty good. So your Javante stock has to feel pretty good right now. I like it big time. Uh, I'm gonna go with at. I'm gonna go with the Cowboys here, because um, we just saw them come off that tough loss with the Bucks, and uh, and they played. They played well. They played one style. They played the style that they should have, and then they came back this week, switched the style up, played some pretty good defense. They looks like they're getting a somewhat of a decent corner and in, in digs out there, and Micah Parsons, Parsons looks like the real stud, deal out there. Stud. Um, and and just looks like a, a better defensive unit all to, all around, and then Dak yeah. Dak. Under 30 attempts, but pretty good with the attempts that he had. Pretty accurate. Did, did what he had to do. And then a, t- a t- double-headed, two-headed uh, monster in the run game where, you know, Zeke grinding, Pollard getting those, those Oh, Pollard nice looks so much more plays. explosive than Zeke. Pollard looked good. 
Pollard, Pollard does look good. He does and, look good. And we've all been, uh, you gotta, we're, we're, we're big Pollard fans. Uh, if you own Zeke, you have to have Pollard and Pollard has standalone value. That's why he's probably the most valued handcuff in the league because he does, he, he can be good. He was a slot receiver. Um, so yeah, he does have those explosive plays, but you know, he's just doesn't do what Zeke does in the grinding for this team. And then Zeke, can have those explosive plays and be good. So I, I really liked where the Cowboys were at this game. Now the Chargers eas- easily could have won this game. Sure, sure. Uh, pretty heavily penalized. A uh, couple of stupid plays. I think they're the most penalized team through two weeks so far. Uh, well, I missed so. it here. I missed it here week one. So, I mean, Cowboys for me is an over just based on because I wasn't here to say, yo, Dak's still elite. Um, I was could have gone over with the Cowboys. you guys week one. Just so happy with that first Thursday night. So happy to see Dak playing ball and not only playing, but balling out. Um, so good for the Cowboys to get their quarterback back. And he's healthy. He's, he's, it's a better guy. It's a better Sunday of when Dak's healthy. I didn't want to go over because I think this what this is what the Cowboys should be internal like, expectations this is, this for sure. What, well, just based this on is what the they want favored to win that game. and they're foot, on the road. Foot came off last year, right. so that's all I'm saying. Right. Like, no well, once no, you, you once back. you saw Week One yeah. and you knew that you were okay to see them be able to switch the style up and play this way, which is as a as Dre a more conducive that you got to switch the style up. And if they hate, let them hate. And winning watch and them. going deep in playoffs for me than throwing it 58 times, which is what they should have done. Every Everybody should be basically doing against the Bucks. Good luck running the ball. You got to keep them honest. But come on, now. yeah, can't be dumb. Uh, I heard somebody on the radio talking about Parsons. Um, he played defensive end in high school, and um, it might have been on the, was it was it on the Dan Patrick show? Was it what's his name? Uh, Ross Tucker, come on there. Um, it was my, maybe uh, Ross Tucker's got Ross, those plugs. Ross Tucker said meathead James Vanderbeek. He saw Michael Parsons play as a freshman in college in high school. And um, anyway, so he was a stud defensive end, played linebacker in college. And on Wednesday, when they figured out their defensive end wasn't playing, Lawrence. they were like, yo, you got to play defensive end. And he got like five time, five more pressures or, you know, something than the, any other rookie this week or whatever on the stat, you know, out there crushing. Yeah. And to the point where they're like, heck, man, we might have to leave him at defensive end because getting pressure on the quarterback is better than having a linebacker. Yeah. I mean, um, so it was uh, – it was big time. Depends on who you're playing. But. Yeah, well, you got to get pressure on the quarterback no matter who you're playing. Unless you're playing a bad, bad team. It doesn't matter. Um, so, yeah, I mean, yeah, good for the Cowboys. I like that. All right, so you're up at, at expectation. I thought the Browns would be decent, and they're decent. You know, uh, you can't call them good because the Texans could have beat them. Right. Um, but they were beating the Chiefs three quarters of the way through the game. Um, I thought – I knew that Nick Chubb was going to be a stud. Nick Chubb is a stud. They haven't had Odell back. Jarvis Landry just now gets hurt. Right. Defensive semi. You you got to say the defensive underperformed at this point with the Texans moving the ball up and down the field on them before Ty God, Ty God gets hurt. It's like there's almost like if this is so funny because the NFL is so crazy when you're watching it. Sundays are so wild and so much fun and so aggravating at the same time. But then you're like, oh yeah, the Browns go and have a three-quarter game lead on the Chiefs, which is their, you know, AFC nemesis. And then they, you know, low-key, it was a great playoff game last year, but the Chiefs beat them. And it's like, all right, well, let's go measure and stick week one against the Chiefs. Literally could have won that game. Somehow, Tyreek Hill does his thing, 70 yards downfield, gets wide open, catches the ball, Chiefs take the lead, never to look back. So then you're like, okay, next week they play the Texans. Who did beat the Jags in week one, but let's be honest, who's taking the chat the Texans for real? They could have got beat by the Texans, is what we were just talking about, you know? <laughs> right. So like I thought the Browns were gonna be good. They are pretty good. They need to get their act together and get rolling here. I almost had them in the under category for that reason. I, can get, I, thought, I, the can, def- I thought the defense would be a lot better than it is right they're now. They're at like, slash almost below. I can give you, you lost Jarvis, you haven't had Odell. You yeah. know, maybe the, you know you don't have quite, you know, your playmaker's there a little bit, but the Kinda defense like should have been Jay better. Jay Wayne's Broncos were at, for me, it's like at slash above. Mm-hmm. These are at slash below. All right, round us out, Jay Wayne, with the I really under just wanted here. To say out here. I just wanted one sentence to say how good Nick Chubb is. That's all I need. That's Chubb's, why I, Chubb's fantastic. That's why I brought him up. Yards per carry. <clears throat> in an ultimate dynasty podcast league with a bunch of podcasters who are nobody ultimate, wants and nobody Chubb. will buy Chubb from us. It's an it's an outstanding. It's the wildest shit I've ever seen. Or we Saquon. Had, we inherited the team and we're trying to sell off some assets, which we acquired rebuild. Chubb. We we we, uh, right. we, we traded, traded for Chubb. Chubb but Got to. Anyway, under expectation. Let's go with the Bengals. 
which they're usually under expectation. But I, Nothing I had decent expectations for them. But just watching this game versus the Bears, like they should have won. Uh, Dalton was playing well before he exited, though. Wanted to throw that out there. Like Dalton, that's why he's the starter over there. Uh, was playing really well, but you know he goes out. Fields comes in. Fields fumbles on their own like ten yard line or something like that, and the uh, Bengals defender tried to scoop and score, couldn't handle it. Fields got Fields it back. got it back. Should've right, landed on it. Just they would have been right there in field scoring position. Uh, Burrow very uncharacteristic, very uncharacteristically was turning the ball over on three straight throws, had an interception. Third one wasn't his fault, but the first two were pretty bad. Uh, you've got Joe Mixon got 20 carries, all the wide receivers eight. Everything should have, like, it all lined up. They should have beat the Bears. Ran into didn't. that Bears defense. It's buzzsaw still in division. Bengals just came off of overtime. Big win. Win. Just like you were saying with the Raiders, tough to get up again. Mm hmm. Um, so, but they could have so easily won that game, yeah. and they. But they just were also blew. getting blown out for a minute. I mean, it looked. I mean, the Bears were killing them, and they then did all of come a sudden, back they and were, score three, like they two touchdowns covered, late. Slash the bear, like the and Bears. T. Higgins is a beast, and Jamar Chase is good. Can catch. Bench Tyler Boyd this week. He crushed it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Son of a biscuit eating bulldog. Well, I mean, Burrow's knee looks healthy. No so, reason they shouldn't have won that game. They just yeah, blew it. Yeah, to me, if I'm the Bengals, I'm just so like I, that was my biggest question mark coming in. Burrow's knee looked so bad last year in that injury, and he's out there playing. And I didn't just expect an ACL. It. it was more than an yeah, ACL, yeah. and it was bad, bad Two crooked. I think ridiculous crooked. Yeah, and uh, like the kind of crooked that it could have taken him two years to come back from, or never be the same. And he's not out there running around like he was rookie Joe. He covers, but, uh, but he hangs in the pocket still. Joey's he's not scared. He doesn't Joey's need to out buy there a dog. balling, man. It, he's, Never he's scared. Got, he's got a long way to go to be his uninjured self, but he is so far away from what I, you know, kind of expected, which is a stiff. And uh, good for the Bengals because they got their quarterback back. Him and Dak, it's great to see him it seems, playing ball. It seems like he needs to maybe lay off the hair gel a little bit. It seems like he's got too much hair gel going on. It it can sweat down into your just, eye. Just back when I like, had hair and would wear hair gel at one point like in time, he's like using depth. And just like, just and you can't have that stuff on your hands on game day, man. You can't, you got to throw the, the thing ball. The is the sweat; it drops down it's into just, your eye and too burns. Much. Like, can we just? You can't. Uh, there's. He has to be able to get a better gel that looks like it's natural, not like he put product in there. Like you can get it, so you can put styling gel in there. That he would. Know that. He wants it to look wet. Yeah. yeah. Like the Rogers dirty yeah. man bun do. Mm. Rogers is crushing it. What else we got? All right, under. I'm going Colts. Uh, high expectations. The defense hasn't been around. Where's this offensive line at? This offensive line has been trashed through two games. Got absolutely decimated by the Seahawks, and then come right back. And you know, Aaron Donald obviously on the other side of this thing. But not going to give you an easy day. Yeah, he went, I mean, Quentin Nelson was playing well against him, and then he switched sides and started eating. Um, Why not? Go, I don't have to. But run I into mean, this, guy this is supposed to be Carson Wentz comes here, got has a good offensive line. The offensive line has not been good through two weeks. Um, and, and just just a little disappointed with where the Colts are here. I mean, and then the, I know the design play is on that shovel or supposed to go to the. I've never seen an interception on that play. Well, there's been there was just recently there's been a lot more because um, they but, see it coming. But Hines was open in the flat. And I know that the play is probably designed to go here. But like if like just take I know you got just that guy got there. off his block just, really just well. Just peek over that there. It was amazing to, defensive play because he knew what was coming because every because he knows like it's not yeah. catching anybody off guard anymore. Like. You yeah. could fake the play. What the play? What should have been is fake the shovel. Fake that shit. Hit, hit Hines in the flat because he was wide open. I know the design's probably supposed to go to the shovel, but <laughs> a little, little disappointed in the in the Colts uh, there. The the, I mean, week one to not get JT really really rolling after you see Henry just absolutely decimate the Seahawks uh, deep run defense there. Yeah, uh, you know you got the 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 uh, Rams week two where uh, Montgomery just got you. Uh, a couple of times they kind of sh- could have showed you a little bit of a blueprint on how to run against them, um, and 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 you didn't do so. Pittman, Pittman, Pittman looking out, real strong. Pittman looking good. Fine. Pittman above or at expectations almost because we've been waiting that we finally saw from right. what we wanted. Under expectations, Big Co. Let's finish this off. Well, I'm taking the Niners. Ugh, it's terrible. <laughs> this isn't this bad. Big. <laughs> I mean, they are two and zero. They got they got. Covered the spread. 
they got well ahead of the Lions and let the Lions roar back. And this isn't necessarily just about the, I mean, I, pretty much for this entire conversation so far, this has been, fantasy has been a back burner topic on these this conversation. But for me, who's that's under expectations, I thought the Niners would be out here lighting stuff up. They did light the, nine, the Lions up in the first half, but then they didn't want to play in the second half. Yeah, um, well, when you're up 38-10, it's kind of hard to keep the pedal to the metal. This happens a lot. I I get it. So, but yeah, but then everybody starts to get hurt. Nobody's fault, but I'm just uh, this well, is particular I'm, with I'm the Niners. The everybody injuries, does usually get hurt. I'm weaving the injuries more into this conversation. The the fantasy spin on this more in this team and this under expectations for the Niners. It's funny you said that for the injuries, Jay. And I I think I said this in your off season, but. No team in the league the last two years has had more snaps out of their third and fourth running back on the depth chart than the Niners. Mitchell. It's got something to do with having Raheem Mostert. Uh, but, I mean, you know, Breida, yada, yada, you know, the last, couple, last two McKinnon, years. McKinnon, yeah, Coleman. All those guys just falling like flies. Here we are two weeks in. Niners are, might have two new running backs on their team this week because – they just lost three of them, you know, in one game. Plus, back McKinnon. No, uh, they already Mostert, lost Wilson. They Mostert, lost Monster. Now they lose right, Mitchell but, and Hasty. Mostert gave us two carries, two good looking carries, and then he's gone for the year. I mean, it's absolutely crazy. And then Ayuk's got zero fantasy points through two games. Um, other than Debo, goodbye Ayuk. Who's out there doing work? So like, I'm the, I'm under expectation on the Niners. They're two and zero. They could have easily lost to the. Eagles, but they did battle back and win. It was a good road victory. Um, so I'm not upset with the Niners' win loss record. I'm not upset with what's going on over there as far as how to get the games won. But like, let's be honest. I'm in this for my fantasy, and it's a, it's a, it's a wild, wild west over there with the Niners with fantasy football right now. Yeah, I mean, you got, you Debo, about your you got, you got Debo who's absolutely slaying it. I don't it. have any Trey You don't have any. Stuff. So you can't be mad about that. I got one best ball team where I drafted <laughs> I drafted Sermon and um, Moster back-to-back. Thought I played it perfectly. I was like, I got the Niners backfield. They're both hurt. One of them going for the Yeah, game. I mean, M- Mitchell Mitchell gets a decent amount of run and gets hurt, but plays plays against a good front here. Um, and, and the Niners are 2-0. Oh, they went on the road two weeks in a row, East Coast basically from the West Coast, which they nobody does. out there. Wins both of those games. That's as good as you can possibly get. Doesn't matter how you win them. They're not, I don't give a shit about your fantasy team. I and do. Debo's been so, absolutely slaying it. <laughs> anyway, and I really the Eagles care about run game. Team. The Eagles run defense is, is very strong. I mean, what, what are you going to do? The defense so is last most week when out. everybody was going crazy over Elijah Mitchell, he's off most dynasty rosters already. But I'm going around scooping up Jermichael Hasty on the cheap, and then my man gets high ankle sprain out for five weeks. Jesus, I mean, what is going on? All under under expectations. Yeah, under I expected expectations. them to stay healthy. I expected to get some fantasy points from the Niners, and I'm not getting them from anybody but Debo. Debo, baby, got to have him. Can we in get there. Trey Lance in there, but just just give me Trey. Well, you can't put Trey Lance in. The Niners are playing well. Jimmy's playing good. Jimmy's playing good. All right. Well, we had a little Mike Davis segment and and Hill and um, Cordero Patterson in there, but we're gonna we're gonna table that for for next week. Um, That's good. Give me another week to see that thing anyway. Well, I wanted to mostly just talk about people saying stupid shit about both bad of those people, guys. bad tweets. Um, let's let's get to this thrive read. Bad let's do people, a little thrive tweets. read. You've you been thriving. I mean, I always thrive. Do you, who wants to read it? Because I don't want to read it this week. <laughs> you don't want to read it? I read it last well, week. Well, Big Co doesn't have it pulled up. I yeah. can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> thrive. But, but you got to be thriving at this point. So it's a fun little uh, fun little prop. Yeah, you got to come prop up. Just because you don't want to read it don't mean you don't want to play it. No, absolutely not. I love playing it. It's a daily well, fantasy you. sports and esports for those of you that are into that app for player props. With Thrive, you can eliminate countless hours of research and focus only on the top-tier athletes that have the biggest impact on the game. It's fun to do a prop bet, but those are hard to hit. You get a little <laughs> little conglomerate, little uh, hedge, your, hedge your bets a little bit. Right. Let's see here. Choose 10 out of the 20 available player props to build your lineup. Each prop is assigned a fantasy value for both the over and the under based on how likely it is to hit. Hit the most props and rack up the most points to win a share of the prize pool. They have over 140,000 guaranteed prizes for NFL Week 3 and has awarded over $4 million. 
Thrive's featured 100K guaranteed contest, $20 to enter. First place takes home 20K. Use the promo code the FFD all caps. Sign up, you will receive 100% instant first deposit match up to $100. Go download the Thrive Fantasy app in your app store or play store or visit their website, www.thrivefantasy.com. Sign up and prop up today. We, 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 enjoy, all caps. Uh, we enjoy playing this game. It's a fun game to play. Player props in a little tournament style. They have a couple different kind of different games that you can play there. So go ahead and check that out and, uh, and have a good time. So, so Use get, that promo code. They match you. Then your then your normal daily fantasy kind of thing. It gives you gives you something else to kind of fantasy play, but you're you're also more so gambling. You on know you want to bet player props. props. Come on, hit that so, code. The FFD all caps. They match you. Got crushed on player props this week. Mm. I went in looking not for, thriving. I went in looking for one player not prop. Thriving. I saw somebody put on Twitter that hey, I, that Mike Williams catches over under four and a half or something and i was like oh i gotta go bet that so i went in there looking for the mike williams player prop and i clicked six other player props i think i went two and four crushed idiot idiot Idiot. should we hit this next toppy let's do it let's get to some i said hold (laughs) all right let's let's start off with the topic du jour from thursday night uh, Antonio Gibson. Uh, what's the soup du jour? <laughs> That's the soup of the day. <laughs> All right. Antonio Gibson, some people down on him from the Thursday night game. Let's go. Let's get right into it. Buy, sell, hold Antonio Gibson. Who wants to go first? Mm, Got to buy. About that. Hmm. No yawning. You're buying? Oof, past 10 o'clock. I'm old, man. You, anybody, anybody not buying? Anybody you, selling? I'm buying. You're buying? What have you seen out of this guy that you don't like? Yeah, well, it's basically just the production. He had 13.8 points week one and 9.3 week two, so he must be bad. Well, the starting quarterback blew his hip off and halfway through the first game, if he even made it the first half. J.D. McKissick's better. Taylor Heineke has actually looked not horrible, but that's not not who you plan for. That's not how you drew it up. And, uh, you know, he's still a very young guy with limited limited experience and when he gets the ball in his hands he looks good i mean what what's not to i mean what's right. not to buy well it's, it's it's that well jd mckissick still has a role and it's like well jd you weren't talking anything you didn't say a goddamn word about jd mckissick week one when he had one target this week they were in the hurry up multiple times end a half and two times at the end of the game and jd mckissick got in there now you can argue with saying i'm not really sure why antonio gibson can't play this role he was a wide receiver in college, so he should be able to play this role. But you also can't argue that J.D. McKissick did well in the role that he just came out there and played. Like, other than that, like, week one, he had one target. Nobody gave a shit. This week on national TV, when everybody was watching, McKissick came out there and ruined your fantasy day with only getting Gibson, by all, by the way, who was averaging, like, six yards of fucking carry. Yeah. Um, and, and looking great. And, and you're mad at McKissick again, and now he's a factor. And it's like, look, you kind of had to know that J.D. McKissick was still going to be a factor now. I don't think he's going to be a factor every week. He wasn't a factor week one. He just happened to be a factor week two. Like, I think Gibson is slowly morphing into being the dude, and and he's been good week in, week out. So what you see on the field from Gibson is fantastic. It's just, you know, will you ever get to the point where McKissick isn't ruining a little bit of your upside? But at the end of the day, name three dudes who don't have somebody else who's coming in at some point and ruining sure. your fantasy day. Well, and, and you got an old school coach and you got a super young player and a, the guy beside him, the veteran beside him has been around for a while and, and played that role and was also a college season receiver. after season after season. So, I mean, and Tony, like you said, he'll slowly get there and could he do it now and function for sure. But there's no chance that and a, a super young Antonio Gibson who, Touch the ball less than 100 times in college could be able to know and have that experience to lean on because he doesn't have the experience to lean on that J.D. McKissick does. And again, and this is, you know, they don't care about our fantasy teams. They're out there trying to win ball games, do it the best thing they can do for their team. Over time, the best thing for their team will be Antonio Gibson. And, and probably freeze frames it would be antonio gibson already by now and yeah. you know like you said week one they didn't really need it wasn't in a situation where they felt better about mckissick it was antonio gibson antonio gibson antonio gibson week two they're like okay right this minute mckissick's the guy that we need to do, be out there deploying right. in the what we got to get done what you know our backs get the wall whatever two minute drills all that good stuff 
that will be Antonio Gibson one day, and it could be him now, but old school coach knows that this guy's probably more reliable. All they want to do is not have a mistake from the running back. Yeah. It, and in, in that situation, you might not even – if it happens and it works out well, of course you want some all-star play from your running back, but that's not what you're looking for in a two-minute drill. You're looking for somebody who can – Help with the protection, help with the pickups, help with this, help with that. Be in the right spot when the quarterback needs him. Or just be him. just plus-plus in the passing game. Exactly. And Antonio Gibson can be plus-plus as well, but not right now more consistently than McKissick. So you got to give that up right now. And if that, that opens up a buy window for the smart for dynasty sure. players. And that's the point, right? There wouldn't be a buy window if he wasn't getting utilized. If he was getting utilized like he could be, there wouldn't be this buy window. He only had two targets last week. That's ridiculous. That should be the low point of the whole season. Maybe it's not. Maybe there's another buy opportunity. But the fact is, you well, got to hold or buy Antonio Gibson. It, it, come, it comes down to the fact that. That game was on national television on Thursday, and but everybody you, saw it. And week one, nobody saw the five targets for Antonio Gibson. That well, and if if here's how it really works: if Antonio Gibson rattles off three solid games in a row, and then he has a a bummer where McKissick is in the play, hurry up and getting targets all game long, it won't be the same type of buy window, right? You know, you got to use. The, I mean, he had 13 points week one, but he didn't have 28, right? And then last week he had under 10 and you saw McKissick get a goal line carry and convert and all this stuff. And so it's like, yeah. And a 60 yard bomb. Right. So that this is the buy window. If Anton, I mean, if there's another window, it won't be as wide open if it's five weeks from now, if it's next week, then they piggyback. Good for you. You can double down and go buy another one. But for what you're seeing, when you watch Antonio Gibson play, if you're, if you're laying eyes and seeing what he's doing, and I know some people are going to be upset about the eyes, but it's like he is absolutely slaying it on the field. He looks fantastic. So I'm, I'm let's all be honest. Them. It's the Redskins or the football team or whatever you want to call them. They've, they, it, their defense is under they're, – they're not a good team yet. I almost put them at under, uh, one of the unders for right. a thing just because they're, they're, I think they are a little – defensively, they're not, they're not where we thought they would be. They're not the, – defensively, they're definitely not where you thought they would be. And offensively, you're, they're not where you wanted them to be. Maybe, maybe they're where you should have thought they were going to be, which is still – they got – there's no ch- – I mean, they had Ryan Fitzpatrick, and you want him to be a top half of the league quarterback, but he's never been – that more than a season at a time and you're just hoping it would be your season this year with him i mean he's been better the last two years than he was the last eight years but you know what i mean it's just it ryan fitzpatrick was your savior that's how bad it is right over there it's right. still the washington football team all right well let's move on to uh some more and these next two are really not really a question of buy sell hold but just in for me i threw them on here for watching that lions game just this week and yeah they were playing the Packers or whatever and it ended up not being close but TJ Hawkinson to me is buy do whatever you can to buy 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 because for me he has cemented himself as being that tight end four behind the big three guys he can be a volume monster that's there it's there for the taking to have that kind of volume in this offense golf likes him golf threw an absolute gorgeous touchdown pass to him in that game golf has the ability to do so golf has been pretty decent uh, and his role in, in Detroit. Golf um, has been way above expectations. Right. We all love to throw golf out with the trash after what was going on, and he's been way above expectations. But, but not only does Hawkinson have the 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 talent and the volume or the volume uh, possibility, but the talent is off the charts and it's there. So he, he, I believe he is firmly. We like to talk about it as him being, yeah, he's the four, and you got to get. I think he is cemented in that. There's a four, and then there's a that. Now he has created a, an absolute line from Hawkinson to the rest of the tight ends. And maybe Pitts will get there. But right now, for me, TJ Hawkinson is there. He looks like he's on the elite level. He looks like he's got all the skill, and he's got all the path to volume possible. So for me, it's do whatever you can to figure out how to get TJ Hawkinson on your team. Well, you go back to, I mean, the the connection with golf. He, there was a stretch in the game. He got three straight targets, three straight catches. Right. You know, anytime you go back go- to the week before against the Niners, peppered. When you're gobbling up targets like that from a tight end, that's all you can ask. And you give him some talent and you give him some nice, you know, lob passes in the end zone for touchdowns. Now you got elite tight end status. I'm mad at TJ Hawkinson. I needed 24 points from him. Uh, he got me 23. So. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Under expectations. <laughs> this is my fantasy team. And and the next one is is another lion. I, I, well, I was 
voice texting my own self. I'm like, what are you doing with two lions on the must buy sheet? But <laughs> God damn it. If Deandre Swift doesn't look every time he touches the ball, he just, you're holding your breath. He's bursting at the seams. Like he looks like, and, and he's again, an onomatopoeia uh, again, Swift. with the, with, I forget which one of you I was talking to about, you know, Jameis having an easy out for touchdown passes when he checks it down to Kamara from wherever the hell he is, whether it's 10, 5, 20, 40, Swift is the same way. It's like the passing game volume should be there for check downs from golf. And when he gets it in his belly, he's just fine. And I love this offensive line that the that the Detroit Lions have put together here. Maybe the Bengals should have taken Sewell. I don't know. Because um, Burrow's been pressured a shit ton <laughs> again. Um, Chase is scoring touchdowns, though. Whatever. Let's keep Got my franchise for- quarterback upright. T. Higgins is just fine, and Tyler Boyd can work. T. Yep. Higgins is more than just fine. Go Tigers. Um, but, yeah, I think, I think again, for me, it's by Swift high at every opportunity you possibly can. I'm doing whatever I can to get DeAndre Swift you on definitely- every fantasy team I can possibly get. I like it. He was on a lot of people's must-avoid list. Mm. All right, so the next guy is, is not a, a must-buy, out of, I don't think, for, for anybody right now. Um, and it hurts my heart with that fumble at the end of the game uh, on Monday night there to watch that happen. Or was that Sunday night? Sunday night. Sunday night. Um, Clyde Edwards-Alaire, next guy on the list. Definitely today. a must-buy. Um, so How could he not a, be a must-buy? It was a huge disappointment to see him get that ball knocked out. The Chiefs were going to go probably coast to, a, to another victory over the Ravens. Same story, same ending. Instead, uh, a big punch out and a, a, a new ending out. to uh, a, a story that had been... Um, dominated by the Chiefs there. So, Clyde edwards alaire you trying to get out of this uh, predicament here that, that Clyde Edwards, he definitely hasn't returned value on, on what's going on with Clyde. Uh, or you uh, you buying you buying more you buying more. We well, can't sell. You right can't now. sell. You can't. I mean, I, knew- I saw somebody tweet out, "I'm selling low and I'm happy to do it." And it's like, why? Idiot. You still, I mean, there's going to be a... Two, no one else is getting work there. Two or three touchdown game there. I mean, it's... it's Wait for the upswing if you want to sell. Obviously a very unfortunate fumble and a terrible time and on the Sunday night game. And like Casey said, there's they've had to... Ravens number. The Ravens wanted to win that game so bad. They had, they had Lamar Jackson playing. If we lose, we're out of the playoffs race, Lamar Jackson. Right. Like that was the Lamar Jackson I told you all off season long the Ravens were coming with because they were just had to play like that. But they're not gonna play like that every week. But they wanted to play like that this week mm-hmm. to beat the Chiefs. It meant so much for the Raider of Ravens to win that game. And the Chiefs were still gonna win. Yeah. The well, Chiefs were the still Chiefs gonna win. Still gonna a little win. fumble. And yeah. it's a terrible fumble. Cloud Edwards, uh, you know. I did see somebody tweet. I've been really like hit or miss on staying on top of my 100% of the NFL life, crazy life right now. Clyde sprained his ankle a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. In the preseason. Preseason, ankle sprain. So big reminder to me. I remember Casey telling me he was hurt. And I was like, Clyde's even hurt. You know, I just haven't watched every single snap. Well, you didn't hear anything. You didn't hear any good or bad news. Somebody was trying to be the calm and the whole Clyde Storm saying, hey, he twisted his ankle really bad a couple weeks ago. What are you guys talking about? I forget. I'm really bad at this. Somebody Mm -hmm. said to go buy him instead of selling him. He twisted his ankle and and he's not not 100%. So don't don't pile it on right now. Go take advantage. Um, So, yeah, Jay's right. You can't sell now. If you're selling now, you're doing dynasty wrong and if he goes to zero like he's a first round draft pick for the chiefs and he was good he's don't forget he's the guy that nick saban said he was the only they, their first priority in practice for the bama going against lsu was hey let me figure out how to negate clyde edwards from the game plan right not all those other studs so that doesn't make make clyde edwards a good professional well, he said running he was back. the most difficult person to prepare for on that squad what right so is clyde all of a sudden, just not a good running back? Or did he sprain his ankle four weeks ago and it's a six-week injury, but he's still playing? Like you said, nobody else is out there taking work from him. And if you sell low, you're more than likely going to regret it. There's definitely going to be another high spot. Well, and if you can go say. buy low, then good for you. 
yeah, I think it's a, I think you're for sure a buy low. And if you're not a Clive believer, like I get it, you want to just stay stay out of it. Maybe you not if you're not a Clive believer, you don't have him. You had to pay so much to get him, you don't. Well, I meant, have I meant him. to not so go, then you're not, you're not gonna, gonna buy. try to buy him. I get um, it. at that point. Um, but I mean, like you said, there isn't anybody else really taking anything on that team, and they're really like nobody even as far as another receiver has even emerged as another guy. So Clyde is primed to be the third option on that team. I mean, maybe he does end up just being in purgatory here where it's probably more like 10 or 12 points a game. You're not getting the return on your investment that you were getting, but like the 10 or 12 will be, should be a reasonable uh, expectation for each and every week. And, and again, clearly not the, what you paid for, but I mean, like you said, if you did want to sell or if you do have them, like there's, He's so he's always so close yeah. to a twenty point week, and that could happen three, four weeks in a in a row so quickly. So even if you bought low and wanted to sell again, you certainly could. And if you want to sell, you have to wait until you get that stretch. Maybe Clyde gets healthy, and I just I just I'm gonna continue to just double down, triple down, and keep buying as much Clyde Edwards as I can because I love Clyde Edwards. I think he is a great player. Um, yeah, has he looked? absolutely great this year no but again a little slow on on with the ankle recovery and not looking quite as nimble as he was but you know if, if he if he could just up it to 15 16 attempts a game and see five targets a game and 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 have those catches like you could be he could be up near the 300 touch threshold pretty easily and i think if he gets in that threshold and can can continue to get uh the lone work for this team and this offensive line is going to continue to improve and get better I think there's plenty of opportunity for Clyde to be very good on this team. Yeah, and it's it's all about the 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 bummer here is the Chiefs aren't using him. They're not using him like they use Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt was a 300 touch guy. They just he had 13 carries and no targets last game. No running back is going to be great with 13 carries. And that's it. And you're going well, against a that, good that would front be the with the Ravens, part where he's right? just not the usage isn't isn't what you need it to be to, to justify the means to the return. But he's it's it's early in the year. This is two games of a seventeen game season. He's the only guy they have. They spent a first round pick on him and he was hurt in the preseason. So I'm gonna relax. I'm not gonna panic. I'm definitely holding and I'm down to buy because I still believe in the player. I believe in the talent and the situation is everything you could want. Right. They just need to use him a little bit more and I I, I, w- I would bet that that's coming. All right. Good shit. Who who we got next? I mean, I just got to touch on a little bit of Visca, Visca Chenault. I don't know if you guys read the same thing I did. Only player in NFL history to have five plus targets and gain no yards. Uh, he was two of seven. So nobody's ever minus- had five targets and didn't catch anything. That, there's not a reception uh, parameter in there. Ah, uh, it was a it was a roto world blurb. No one's ever had five targets and not had any yards. And he didn't have zero yards. He had minus three yards. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. Week one, he had a decent week. I think he caught he got seven balls for 58 yards or something like that. Had 12.8 fantasy points. Um, so you, you were feeling decent about it at that point. But then if you watch him get negative three yards this past week, you might be out on Visca. You might be teetering and if anyone's teetering i will go gobble up some visca that was more of not a buy so hold just to go buy yeah visca. which has been you know kind of what all of these have pretty much into. been buy or hold um, and, and there's a lot of growing pains right now in jacksonville and sure it's just you know they're, sure. just, they're not even sure what the hell's going on definitely a little disappointed in the offensive production if you bought james robinson at all right now and then the etn thing happened you're thinking what the hell's going on here mm-hmm. uh it's basically well, they're the not running it. and yeah they're just, they're just the, throwing the, the just shit out of there it. uh so odd marvin jones but yeah marvin's just fine viscous yeah Some sure, sure with the buy and who, who, what else we got i'll double down on Ayuk. let me buy some Ayuk. he's oh, cheap yeah. right now super cheap i'm gonna buy some Ayuk. I'm going to go try and fish for some Miles Gaskin and Damian Harris. They've both been teetering around the 10, 12 point range. And if, if someone has them, they might be not exceeding or at, at expectations that they might have for them. I'm Those are some with, cheaper little running backs I might go stab on. I'm fine with doubling down on Ayuk. I know the talent's there. I just don't, there's, there's something a little weird going on right now, but I'm fine with trying to, if somebody's upset with Ayuk, I'll, I'll go buy the Ayuk. I got yep. a lot of, yeah, I, I got a lot of Ayuk and I'm very upset with Ayuk. 
but sure. I ain't selling cheap. Can't start him, but uh, can't he's on sell my, him. Yeah, bench him. And I'll, I'll buy him. I got a lot worse players on my bench, bro. Yeah. Gaskin looked great week one, week two. I don't know what the hell happened. All the Two are left, and then uh, Brissett comes in, and they can't operate at all. For I don't know what's going on. Um, and the Bills have had their number to be uh, clear with that, but for Miles Gaskin to be – Oh, the beers, uh, Bills blew them out. Not so yeah. great. And then Damian Harris could be a nice window coming up here. And they, they got the Saints and the Bucks back to back. Uh, two presumably pretty good run defenses. Good call. So I feel like you might get a little dip and maybe some Harris here. Hard to buy him this week, Jay Wayne, because he was on the he was Chris Berman's highlight one, for the Patriots. Highlight. He, that little nice little run he had. Ridiculous touchdown. Chris uh-huh. Berman gave him the old into the yeah. end zone, you know. So. Yeah. If you wanted to sell Damian one Harris on top after plays. some decent weeks and maybe a little love here, I also would be fine with that. I, you know, I don't know how long it's going to be for Damian Harris to be. I'm sure this season he'll be fine. I don't know after that what it's what's going to be for Damian Harris. He just uh, so looks, I'd be fine with he looks that. He looks good. great. He looks yeah, so good. He looks, he looks just fine. Uh, so, but if you wanted to sell, I couldn't argue with you. So I could I could put a sell on here, especially before he went to the New Orleans Tampa and got the the value maybe. Drop, bottom drops out of this thing, but then you could, you know, or you could be buying at that point. So I could go either way on that, but I could see selling Damian Harris after two decent performances, getting a little love highlight action this week. And, um, and, you know, not knowing and, and man, wanting you, what is that exactly going to happen to this Patriots backfield. And right now also everything is the best case scenario for Patriots running back. Sure. Because Mac Jones in there, it's all check down short things, keeping it very close to the vest. At some point, when when maybe they open some things up, maybe it's not it's it's a little muddy for that. And and you saw James White maybe getting a little extra run in this game because of the Damian Harris fumble from the last game. Uh, Harris, you know, put put the team on his back with that ha- highlight and, and made himself so have, much have some points this week. Where if if that run wouldn't have happened, it would have been a pretty low uh, output for Damian Harris. This exactly, week. that was more than half of his total for the week. That one run. So I could, I could see a sell is. window and I could see let them let, and buy and see how the rest of the season goes. In all my leagues, people are already looking for running backs. So, of course, uh, I'm going to hold on to the running back. You got anything else? What else you got? That's uh, in redraft. Go buy some A-Rob. I don't think you're going to get A-Rob cheap in Dynasty, but in redraft, he's only been at like 10 points for the first two weeks and just been missing on some bigger weeks. Missed the one with Justin Fields there. Dropped it. Just straight yep. dropped it. Uh, Justin Fields didn't look good, but that was a high in his in in his run there, and I don't think he looked great in most of that preseason. And he threw him a touchdown pass but, earlier. But he in did. The he did. Allen Robinson didn't help him out with that drop ball there. Yeah. Um, Some other misconnections that were just just right there. Like he could easily have bigger weeks than what he's had, and and in redraft he's probably attainable. So yeah, just want to throw that out there. Uh, how about Cooper Cup and Tyler Lockett? Any any interest in selling Whoa. selling at peak value right now with those guys? Cup feels older than Lockett. They're probably the he's same not. age. He's not. Lockett's he's like two years older than really? Cup. Really, Cup feels older than Lockett. Cup, I think, is 27. Lockett's 29. Wow. Um, Lockett seems like he's locked into Stafford's guy and their big play guy right now, and it just it seems, seems like it'd be really Cup? hard to get rid Cup. of Cup. Or Cup. Sorry, Cup. Oh, it's, if you're trying to contend, you ain't trading away Cup right now. Or Lockett. Or Lockett. Lockett's on, Lockett and Cup are the guys that are on the teams that have scored the most points yeah. through two weeks. They're but the only ones in the top of, ten scoring that aren't quarterbacks, That's basically. kind of what I'm saying. Is this, is, is this like an auto sell because we could see we've seen the wheels fall off a cup he feels old will he make it through seven wheels won't games? fall off it's will, just will me it, every once will, in a while will it's it, hurt will and it it's turn? not an issue he's he's back from it will it turn the yak was on display will he will it turn to robert woods if, if cup goes down and misses some time which it is hasn't been banking on a cup um, injury well i'm just saying like it, it Everything could turn and and, the, and lock it the same way. Lock it was so streaky. DK Metcalf hasn't done a whole lot just yet. DK Metcalf could easily be catching those same balls that Tyler Lockett's catching right now and completely nerf Tyler Lockett's value from where it is right now. Both of these guys seem like, yeah, of course I want to hang on to these guys because it's so great right now, but maybe I should just capitalize on the most value I could get for these motherfuckers and get somebody who's a little younger and it, a little safer. If you're not it. trying to win, it, you know, if you if you if you're already zero and two and you have those guys on your team and you know you're not like a contender, I'm saying either way, I don't give a shit. But yeah. no, like the only thing that's ever hold either one of those guys back in the past has been injury, and they both look healthy. Why would I fuck with that? <laughs> because they're not young, and this is a chance to kind. Of, 
Okay, they're never going to get more value. And, lo- than they and are that's right not now. true. Like Robert Woods has held Cooper Cup back. DK Metcalf held Lockett back at times last year. That's not true at all. Lock- like- Lockett had some injuries last year that held that held him back. That weren't that were overlooked and not talked about a bunch. And oh. when he was healthy. The beat report, the inside beat reporter over here. He, I mean, Lockett, I'm not lying. It's Lockett, I like Lockett. I'm just saying, like, well, they're, they're Casey at- said streaky. I mean, there was case. I mean, Lockett had some monster catch games, and then he had and some. It, and, and if you've been paying attention to what he's doing right now, they're monster catch games where he's getting loose behind the defense. I meant like with huge, well, yeah, well, I, I meant yeah, no, like I, I know what you're number saying. of catches, right? But yeah, and he's those are bombs that he's catching, and chances are that doesn't that doesn't continue. Uh, very um, consistently. consistently throughout Unless the season. Unless an injury hurts, I this ha- happens. I, 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 maybe it's not. Maybe he's not top ten scoring in the all of fantasy for the rest of the year. Right. Well, I'm not saying that both of these guys won't have nice finishes to the exactly. season because they're just one. The they've top. already put them they're all. Just the, the they're top. just the two but biggest guys who are crushing right now, and we've seen them both be very good, and we know they're very good. But we've also both seen them be super streaky banged up all of those things where they've gone hot and cold whether it was injury or not we've seen it kind of go all the way around so to me it seems like maybe those are two huge cells that you could just they're great clean sell. Up on it's, right it's, now. it's a i mean there's there's sell mighty high is what it would be and i like i said i haven't really been 125 percent locked into some of this stuff and just a couple days ago we're finishing up week two and i'm looking around at some of my teams and i'm like you know what i didn't follow my my roadmap which is like after week one go sell the guy who scored three touchdowns you know like that's basically what casey's saying here is like it's not cup or lock it i I like both guys a lot it's just these are the guys that are red hot and if you sell there you don't get red hot and stay red hot forever if you sell red hot and you buy back in the mild section you're doing it right and gotta have that glass of milk you know so like I get what Casey's saying, and I mean it's hard to trade one of those cats if you are like, if you were the favorite coming in to be a champion, and you got one of these guys. I can see why it's hard. You can be a you need if you're two and zero. You need to know if you're a phony two and zero. You could be you could easily you could easily be two and zero right now because you got Cup or Lockett or both. You probably are. The rest of your team might not be good enough to make it. You know, it's a long season. You got bye weeks. You got injuries. You got the complete luck of the fantasy playoffs if you're not playing total points. So I can see, I can see selling high. I like, I get it. That's how you. That's how you're supposed to play the game in dynasty and redraft. I mean, you're not selling either one of these guys. Of course not. Like, of course, I'm just gonna not. ride that wave. Yeah, you ride it. But in dynasty, you could turn, you could turn one of these guys into, like Casey said, somebody younger. And probably a huge draft pick to the real contender, right? Or somebody who thinks they're a real contender, and maybe he's still gonna a get pretender. Draft pick. Oh, the best part would be is to go find a phony team that doesn't know it and get their draft pick, so that you don't give it to you don't get one of these guys to the actual best best team in the league, which basically would lock you in to be trading. You know, maybe if you part of the package is a first round pick, now you'd be getting the one ten, one eleven, one twelve based on luck in the playoffs. You go get that phony team. Maybe you just got a one six. Lock it and cup get or get hurt, mm-hmm. and now they're a bad team. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, you got one four, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, or you're in the FFPC and you play for the first round pick and you, first number the one one, and you don't know how it's going to shake out. Anything can happen. All right, so that wraps up that segment. Big Co, you trying to stick around for these final two segments, or you want to get out of here? Uh, Completely your call. I got another segment in. What was 11? Jeez. Yeah. I got one more in. All right. Let's do it. I already started. The music, I like it. So. I mean, I, we could, you, could, you could have still exited. I got one more, man. I'm not going to make it to this If one. you've been following us for a while, this is a, an OG right here. Brought it back. A little different than we used to do it. Uh, going to weave this in and out of the scenes. But- send us a tweet. Hit us up at the FF Dynasty. If you got some flexual production questions, hashtag it. Hit us up on the Twitters. We'll, we'll, we'll get to it next week. Also, if you're listening in, on YouTube and, and any other form of where you can leave a comment, go ahead and if you want us to uh, evaluate a trade, maybe grade a trade, uh, if, you, if you leave some in the comments, we could uh, hit you with a little you trade recap comment, and grade. We'll leave a comment. Yeah. Give, everybody gets a little comment. Say, ah, oh, I traded Cooper Cup for uh, this, this, and this. What, what do you think? Oh, I love it. 
Sure. Show us the sell highs with the cup, cup and lock it. Any, any trade, really. We might, may or may not read it, but, it, you know, hit, hit that comment. Hit me up before you make the trade. Good what call, Jay. That? Good call, Jay. No, nah, I'm not. You got to pay five get bucks enough. a month for that. Good enough. That's, well, obviously. Got to get it on the uh, Discord. Patreon.com slash CFF Dynasty. Get your Discord login. All right. Let's get into some flexual production. So this Flexual production. These are guys who, you know, are we, are we squeezing them in on, the, on your flex plays? These here? are must starts. Are they must starts? Some of we, are they some must of starts. Them, some of them may be deemed as must as must starts this week, but uh, there's also some guys who you know are you getting them into the flex and uh, you know the thing with this is is if it's you know obviously it's the structure of your league. Some of these guys will be in no matter what. Other one course, of these guys doesn't have any flexes. Right. You got. If it's three wide receivers and two flexes, then yeah, you're, you're playing. playing. You know whoever the hell you got. Yeah. Uh, if if it's just a standard boring sleepy league where it's two two two. One and one, two wide receivers and one flex. Then Marvin Jones might be on your bench right. if you got a good I mean, team. Yeah, so don't, so don't come at me being like, I'm never going to start Zach Pascal. Is he on like, here? Sometimes you got to start <laughs> Zach Pascal. And last couple of weeks, you weren't upset about it. Scooping him up for a dollar in a you, best ball league before week one. You probably didn't start Zach Pascal so, well, the last. We'll, couple get we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. I scooped him up for a dollar in a best ball league right before week one, Sunday morning. I'll, if this just is gonna sit here, I'll drink it. <laughs> what did you say? No, <laughs> just gonna sit. The here. song's gonna be over before we get to one guy. All right. Well, we Let's don't need to. We Flexible don't need loud production. music while we're actually trying to talk. I mean, it's, no, it's you can't. You can't listen loud. to it. Let's start out with Marquis Hollywood Brown. And, and the way this kind of came to be is, I wanted to maybe do guys that you drafted and haven't really made it into the lineup yet, or maybe they did last week. But like, you, you drafted them not to be in the lineup, and maybe you got to get them in the lineup now. Of course. Um, so kind of flexual production here. Marquise Hollywood Brown, is he is he in your lineup this week? Oh, 100%. I think he's got to be, right? 100%. He, was, he sat my bench week two because he had that the questionable. Q. And it was on that, had that Sunday hamstring, night. Hamstring, had that hamstring. Can't you be did, fucking around with a Sunday night questionable. You didn't want Unless him you got to a be Monday rolled night. out. Then he goes out there and does work again. But I uh, love some Marquise Brown in the starting lineup right now. How could you not? Got to. And you know what? To see minute. Week one, horrible loss for the Ravens. Who is walking off, hugging the quarterback? Marquise Brown. Hollywood. The boys maybe. go to the locker room together. Got the same hairstylist. Just just arm over shoulder. Just like, hey, man, I know that sucked. I got you. I, I got you. Yeah, we cool. He's we got a barber. It. Yeah. Well, they're getting <laughs> braids. They're not going to a barber. So, Marquise Brown in your start lineup. I know nothing I, I about agree. hair care. Marquise is basically at this own. point got to be in there until until we see Bateman back on the field and see what he can do. I mean, Mark Andrews has been a pretty much non-factor for the most part. Okay, in some tight end premium spots, but not where he's been at. Marquise has been the focal point of this offense. Sammy kind of filling in some, some short blank spots and short and mid-range passes to Marquise Brown, right? Like more than just the long deep bomb. Not just the bomb. We love the bombs, love but it. like. Uh, you know, ten yards. Put the bomb on. Ten yard in. All of a sudden, Lamar's scrambling, rolling left just a little bit and hitting this guy. You can tell that like, they're locked in together. They've been and, working on that. And, they've been like, "Hey, how do we get you the ball in your hands more than just throw up the ball, not having to travel fifty yards before you catch it?" Right. And that that's there's no problem when Marquise Brown has three catches for hundred and twenty yards and a touchdown. That's great. But if he can have six or seven catches. Then when it doesn't, when he has two catches. Six and, of ten. When he has two catches and five targets and a ton of air yards, but he only has 30 yards, that five point sucks. But if he's, you know, that he can smooth right. out and all of a sudden he's not just like the best make, ball receiver right, anymore. Exactly. It's not make your play in one day. It's it's even if I can get six targets, maybe one of those is the deep one. But out of those six, I can, he can then break one of those for a big one right. as well. So there's there's so much to like with Marquise. You probably didn't play him week one, and then week two was probably a little questionable because of the questionable tag. Put but got to be in the lineup this week, right? I mean, Fire him up. Some Hollywood Brown picked right up where he was uh, the last six weeks of the season, basically being one of the best receivers in fantasy. Hollywood is right there. All right, Mike. Dub probably right now outside of maybe a Tyler Lockett and a and a Cooper Cup where you had to draft a little higher probably the sole uh, biggest proper upper of uh, fantasy players right now for for getting big points if he's been in your lineup mm-hmm. and I know after week one he I think he was in our lineup week one in the team because he had to be and then had there was no be. way he was coming out week two that's and right he's not coming out week three that's right he's, plug him in is this a must start Mike. must start. 
Yeah, I mean, even if you have someone better, yeah, uh, on paper, name doesn't he's matter. Scored twenty points each week. It's it's uh, it's the same vein as Marquise, just a different style of player. It's not just the bomb and the big play in the red zone. It's everywhere down the field. Mm-hmm. And now, if you can get this, like. He's a real receiver. This is what you've been waiting for with Mike Williams. And Herbert alluded to it in the preseason. He said, you know, Mike Williams is somebody we should get the ball to more. And when the quarterback says that, and I feel bad because I I wasn't on Mike Dub this offseason after four straight offseasons of being like, oh, Mike Dub, I just I have him in places. And if he's good, I'll be ecstatic. But if he's not good, I can't I can't put my name out there anymore. Herbert's unlocked the man. And I fucked it up because Herbert can get him the ball from anywhere. Herbert can be far half. had him last year. Far side didn't doesn't work out. matter. It was so spotty. Herbert was a rookie. Fair. Trying to figure this thing that out on the start. fly. You, just, you know, just trying to figure it out on the fly. Mike Mike Williams is, is a stud right now, and you got to start him. Next. All right. Cortland. Cortland. Cortland, Cortland, get out of the yard. Has a bad week one coming <laughs> back from an ACL. Just missed a little bit. And Judy then, was in there. Then, then week two, now no Judy. Hamler doesn't look like he's going to be a factor very much. Fant could be in there, but Cortland looks like him and Teddy are dialed in. You put him in the lineup week three. If you got, got to squeeze him in. I mean, you can't go nine for 12 with 159 yards and sit the bench the next week, especially with Judy ain't coming back anytime soon. Judy I can't believe home. Judy ain't come. I can't <laughs> believe Hamler didn't come home. Why didn't Hamler come home? Where's where, where, what is Hamler out doing? She up? expects him home any minute. <laughs> so we're gonna need, said. <laughs> we're gonna need some Hamler coming home. Little uh, fant baby, plug son. Fant baby, fant Fancy. baby, fant, right. fant, fant. Pull over that ass too, fant. So this one's a little different because Pittman obviously had a big breakout here week two, but now maybe no Wentz leading into this. So it's it's mm. is there? You get pause with Eason, I guess. Plug and Pittman. For sure. Yeah, I can. Don't I can need to squeeze that. Pittman in there. At this point, you're just happy to see the production out of Pitt. Pittman being Pittman. This is what you want after round. Pittman. You're, you're not you Pittman counting on starting him. You have this somebody else. Pittman yeah. on your bench right now without with quarterbacks. Hopefully, you have Mike Dub or, or Hollywood. You can squeeze in there for, exactly. for Pittman. Quarterback instead. situation. Yeah. So that makes him a you know probably pump the brakes. A that's exactly. That, that's that's funny you say it like that because this is. Pittman is a guy you you drafted Pittman in a startup before Mike Dub and Marquise Brown all day every day this year, and that's the way startups work. Well, that's why we talk about receivers in the off season when we're talking to you about startup drafts. You draft your Mike Pittman and you sit him on your bench, and later on you go get your Mike Williams and you plug him in. Right, 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 right. And your Marvin Jones. Next on the you list. You plug him in. Next. Marvin Jones. You ride out with that young fellow on the bench until you can trust him. You plug in the Wiley veterans, Mr. Marvin Jones. Mar- Big Co. the other day in our group chat double posted a, a Marvin Jones statistic. <laughs> I, think it, I think it was more so a Darren Waller statistic, but it, Marvin <laughs> Jones was on the list. <laughs> Marvin Jones in your lineup? I posted it first time so you could see Darren Waller. I posted it again so you made sure you saw Marvin Jones. And Brandon Cooks? Cool. I've had Marvin Jones on the bench for the last two weeks because I've been playing Corey Davis and I've been playing. Uh, Corey Davis did well. We Robbie played. Anderson, mm, you know, well, he's breaking my heart right now. Been playing Visca, but them boys are all out. Yeah, Marvin Jones is in. That's it. Marvin Jones is in that last flex spot for no doubt sure. About it. No doubt about it. Mar- flexual, uh, sexual, flexual production. Robbie Anderson's breaking my heart right now, and I that's I just benched him for Marvin Jones in another league. Had to. Gotta. All right, so I mean, obviously we we talked to another Colts receiver. A lot of weird shit going on that 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 that, that Jaguars offense, but the Marvin's stable is Marvin, mm-hmm. and yeah, well, that was the preseason, mm-hmm. and it carried right into the regular mm-hmm. season. So we're missing a quarterback, and this is already a little bit of an obscure start, I guess, if you're not into it. But Zach Pascal on here had two nice weeks in a row, uh, but but this week you're probably going to sit him. Because of the backup quarterback situation, most likely, right? Definitely. I mean, he, he was kind of a last anytime, ditch effort. Even even a, even if Wentz plays the last couple on the, two bum ankles, probably benching Pittman in the last Pascal. two years when all the when all of the other wide receivers get hurt and you don't know who's going to get the ball. Pascal always has two touchdowns. Yeah, but not for two weeks in a row to start the season every game of the first two weeks. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So we'll we'll, we'll kind of. Put Pascal's him on the back like burner. the ultimate. Put him, put him on the back burner. Nobody ever wants to draft like he's the ultimate dollar. Get, get ad, no respect. Uh, you know, uh, best. I had guy. him on a dynasty league so years ago. It feels like, yeah. And cut ties long ago. All of a sudden, what? Mm-hmm. Didn't have time to hold out for this, but 
All right. Sterling Shepard. Whoa. Back from the dead. In the lineup. Whoa. Gotta be, right? Just a vacuum right now. <laughs> he, let me, I thought Daniel Jones played his best football game I've ever 100%. seen him play last week. Had a little bit of time for some reason against that good front for and was some delivering reason. some good balls, was just making good decisions on when to run. They were calling Washington a good D under expectations. Called, play, uh, uh, ca- called run action there. I haven't seen Daniel Should've Jones. Should have been a touchdown, play a bogus better. holding call. Right. That was a bad play by the receiver. He shouldn't have done that. It, 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 it should have been a touchdown. It. There was nothing there. Um, yeah, I haven't seen Daniel Jones play a better game. So good for and Sterling Shepard just sucking him in like a vacuum. Just getting number all, changed to three really did it. Yeah, the I number mean, changed to three always hasn't been pretty good. But healthy. healthy, healthy Sterling Shepard just gets all the dirty bullshit for mm-hmm. the Giants, mm-hmm. and he and and Daniel he's been with Daniel since Daniel got there. Mm-hmm. He's comfortable with him, and he just va- it's it's a screen three yards, it's a little seven yards, then it's fifteen, then oh shit, maybe Sterling's in the end zone, and mm-hmm. Sterling can do a little, get a little always been good in you. the red zone. So I, I think Sterling's got to make it in your lineup this week. Now, again, if you got shallow lineups and, and it's an eight-man league and you yeah. got fucking... Probably not making it into my one flex spot. I probably have like a Marvin Jones or somebody I want to play over him for that one flex. But if you're in a two-flex league or a tri-flex or something where you're starting a mad amount of guys, like he's got to be in there. I mean, I've, I've, I, I'd have to flip a coin whether it's Sterling or Marvin Jones. I mean, we may co have this situation. We, and, t- we and went Sterling. We went Sterling this week, and it basically, I think they were about the same. Um, it's a good problem to have. Good problem to have. And, and I didn't want to get all, all receivers in here, so one with three running backs. Tyson Williams. You, you're firing up Tyson Williams this week. And this may be more of an RB2 situation for you. Like, I was not just even about to say, I got production. two teams right now that I'd love to see Tyson in my RB2 already. Let's do it. Just, just – just i mean i got dobbins on the ir um uh that i didn't have much option i got i got running back troubles on a couple teams and it only takes a couple that's how that's that's how it happens half of your league has running back troubles right now oh no doubt i I mean and the one like i got one of my teams is josh jacobs my third running back he's out and i got uh, you know i got lucky i got dalvin and jonathan taylor and so those two spots are solid but I'd really like to see and Tyson even, Williams on my bench in that league to maybe need to play. You never know. One more league. I mean, Dalvin might not play. I don't know. He's hurt. He's questionable. He hurt his ankle. He's probably going to play. Come back into that game, though. So. Probably going to play, but you never know. And an ankle might tighten up the next day or two, and then all of a sudden you're like, ah, he's awesome. Let's hold him out for a week. Running backs are uh, going to If I have to play Tyson, I'm down. I don't really want to, but I would if I had to, if I had an RB2 He looks good every crunch. time I give him the ball. Right. Till he, you know, Til he fumbled. Till he fumbled in the end he does, zone he and doing an contact. It looks pretty decent. The same thing. The, the same hands. thing we were talking about but earlier. He, with he misses a little pass with pro, with and McKissick. he fumbles here and there. And, and that's Latavius those are the things Murray that will isn't keep going to do anything wrong. John right. Harbo from giving you the full reins and keys of the castle because, like you said, Ravens can win without Tyson Williams. And what are the Raiders doing? Not giving Kenyon Drake more work. They're just pounding Peyton Barber. You brought up Kenyon. You brought up Josh Jacobs being hurt. And even if you have Kenyon, you can't play him. What's Sorry. crazy is they actually – I thought they were just messing around when they said Peyton Barber yeah. was the lead back. I thought he was just like – Just, just playing my game. But yeah. no. And they closed the game out with Peyton too. Like crazy. What's, yeah. Kenyon Drake Good and thing Ball. he paid Kenyon Drake all that money. Yeah. All right. Two more real quick. Sony Michelle of No Henderson. Speaking of closing of out the game, Sony – Sony closed it out. Closed that bitch decent. out for them Looks boys. Spry, so you, I'll play him. If No Henderson – Course. Yeah, Sony's locked in. Anything for you. with the Rams right now? Yes. What is there? Uh, they play RB, is there an RB two with no? True. Oof. Oof. See ya. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> Sit him on the bench. Love it. And if you got him, you like this one. You know, that's the thing. Like, especially in Dynasty, of course it sucks in redraft, but in Dynasty, you just cheer for guys to be good on your bench. That's fine. You made a decision. You sit, start. And Dynasty is not about that. It's about what type of assets I have on my team. If I got Sony Michelle and I don't plug him in this week because he's against the Bucks and somehow you know all it takes is a couple pass interferences and now Sony Michelle has two touchdowns, give him forty yards. That's a decent day, sixteen points. I'll take it. Maybe he got a couple catches. Maybe he gets eighteen, twenty points, and you're like, he didn't even deserve that, but he got two easy touchdowns because of the pass interferences. Like you just got to be like, oh, now either A, I'm gonna profit off of the Henderson owner, or B, I'm gonna profit off of somebody else with Sony, or you know, like that this yeah. just not always about just the one one single week sit start. Like you put Sony on the bench because he's going against the, the Bucks. That's the right thing to do. If he blows up, good for you. Right. Yeah, you know, so like that's 
just got to get uh, a little bit. If I'm the Rams, there's, I just got to let Sony be my sacrificial lamb here anyway. I don't need Henderson coming yeah. back there with bad ribs yeah. playing against the Not Bucks. against them boys. <laughs> no just a rib with Hendo? I think torn cartilage, though. I've had that injury, and it's awful. Sounds awful. Between the ribs. Who you got? Last one. Elijah Mitchell, if healthy, and said they can go. Do you play Elijah Mitchell versus the Packers? Of course. I mean, yes. 100%. If he says, if they say that he's healthy and he's going to play, like, you know, there's nobody else that is familiar with anything. Right. That's going to be like, oh, well, let's rotate All it him takes in. is one shot and he's not playing. That's kind of. Should have had a touchdown. True. They called it back. It would have made your week. I mean. Eagles played really well. Their again, defense played really well. Half of your home. league probably needs a running back. So well, half of the league has the got no problem firing up Elijah Mitchell if he's going to be the guy. The Niners are about to go in there and gut the Packers defense. The, the Lions. Most likely so. But here's no the, team's gotten less pressure on the quarterback than the Packers. The so Lions. Jimmy should have time. Move the ball with no problem against the Packers in the first half. Hey, we give, they, give the Lions some credit, but. Yeah, you're uh, right. The Lions moved the ball with no problem against the Packers in the first half. In the second half, they had a strip sack fumble on golf, and then he padded the, padded the fumble away from himself. Like, he was literally about <laughs> to throw the ball, and he padded it one too many times, and he hit the bottom third of the ball, and it fell out of his hands, and then they picked it up. Like, they just imploded, but the Lions were rolling, and the uh, we obviously saw what the Saints did to them. Like, the, line, the the Niners are about to roll the Packers defense. Maybe the Packers offense keeps up, but this is the same team. I mean, this is the a Niners worse, have eaten the Packers lunch. This is the worst defense than the Packers than the than the than the Niners roll through the Packers a couple times the season or season you know last couple seasons. They haven't been able to stop them. No, that, that would Smith, almost be my on only. IR. That would almost be my only uh, like pump like that they've kick the shit out of them so many times in a row that maybe for some reason they don't they have get the personnel to do it probably they not. don't have the personnel to do it all right that's it Zedaria Smith is on IR um so they just be back they were talking last week um about how they only have two guys they can trust and they had to get them off the field in the first and second down to, so they're not winded uh to to get pressure on third down and like they're they're just the pack they got Zaire they got Alexander um and that's pretty much it defensively yeah they got a nasty lockdown corner who hadn't given up a touchdown since week one of last year 2020 so, yeah you know something Jair alexander's a stud but mm, that ain't how defense works yep. you gotta have either a good team or a couple studs and so maybe i gets involved next especially week. against that running game i think this is the perfect spot for the niners to not be in great shape with running backs to go up against the perfect team who cannot go up against their scheme the Niners going to roll, and if I second, mean, second of all, in watching that game, what in the fucking world are the Packers thinking? Not going, we're going to throw it to Devontae, then we're going to give it Aaron Jones, and then we're going to go Bob Tunyon, and then we're going to go Devontae, and then we're going to go Aaron Jones, and then we're going to go Bob Tunyon. Like when they started doing that against the Lions, they started eating them for lunch. And yeah. before that, I don't know what the fuck y'all were doing, but like just give it to those three guys sure. and rinse and repeat. Like what the fuck? Anyway, all right. You want to get out of here, Big Co? We got two little short segments and then a longer one. You want to do a little start your studs? Or got it? Who we start? All right. So this is basically going to be like, got some studs. You start them, you sit them. Um, start your studs. Start your studs or sit them. <laughs> you got to start them. Uh, Saquon Barkley. You, you, you've, I've, I've, I own Saquon Barkley in two leagues. I've benched him for the first two weeks. In both of those leagues, Good with bench. the expectation coming in, knowing that I was going to do yeah. so, I saw a, yeah. a YouTube a video circulating of a shirtless man that's a Podfather minion saying, beating up the got to start your studs uh, kind of deal. He here. was shirtless, and it's just like, or was Saquon Barkley shirt? No, no, I was confused. Home, uh, John uh, Larky was that his name? I don't know, not sure, never heard of him. Um, should we go shirtless? He was he was basically saying you know, putting an end to the argument of, to of start of start your shirtless. studs here and how you, you know you got to start your studs and it's like well who was drafting Saquon Barkley with the idea of that you got to start him every like he's coming like it was pretty muddy you had to know coming in like Terry McLaurin you fire Terry McLaurin up if he's playing that's a stud that you drafted you, you fire Terry McLaurin up but like sure. Saquon Barkley coming off an injury was just a bad example for him to use in this situation no of, doubt about it of fired up about start your studs. So I've benched Saquon Barkley for the first two weeks smart with bench. the expectation coming in that I wanted to see what was going on beforehand. Um, That's a smart bench. 
Smart bench. You fire in Barkley up this week. If you got an ability, got the Falcons, if you got, got anybody, does no. If you got anybody that you can start over him, I got no problem sitting him until he busts out and says, well, "Let he me get those kind twenty." Of bust touch- out. He looked I, healthy. He, he had a big explosion. He had a yard. big run, but they're still not giving him the touches. Yeah, to so be. I, yeah, he had a good run, but they're still yeah. not leaning on him yeah. like they can. Thirteen carries and only three targets. Yeah, that's going to be twenty think, carries and seven targets. I think this and that's is how prime, it's going to end up being. This is prime. Uh, let's feed Barkley game back. You're playing the Falcons. You, had a, short you, had, a, you week. had a long week this go round. Yeah. yeah, but the problem is if the Giants are playing well, the the Falcons. Somehow the way somehow I didn't see, I was watching red zone, but all of a sudden the Falcons were getting crushed and then it was close again. It was a three point game and then they got crushed again so with two straight pick sixes or whatever. Right. But like in the Falcons, they do that. Obviously, they got a new coaching staff and stuff, but they always get the hell kicked out of them and then they keep fighting back. So like the if the, the Giants could be winning, they're not going to lean on Barkley. If they're losing, they might not be. If you know what I mean, like there's a, there's three different scenarios. If it's a close game, Barkley plays a lot. That could be the game. If for some reason the Falcons are blowing them out, Barkley's off the field. If the Giants are blowing them out, Barkley's off the field because Barkley's not Barkley yet. Like you know, I mean, it's I, more I, than likely going to be a closer game because the Giants don't blow anybody out and the Falcons don't blow anybody out, anybody out either. But those are just options that could happen. As far I mean. If you have Saquon Barkley, you probably need to be playing him anyway. But if you have options, you had options. Smart bench the first two weeks. It's not a it's not a dumb bench to bench him this week so this, if you can not play him. To me, this is the fire it up week. Let me go. I That's think this, fine. this is the spot they're going to spotlight him to be like Saquon's back. This is our franchise player. Here we are. We, he got the rest. He's looked good. He's looked explosive. He feels good. I like we feel it. good about it. It's good narrative. I think this is this is fire up Barkley on all cylinders. So that, you're you're saying bench. I'm I'm all in. I'll fire him up. I mean, bench based on who's on your right, team. Right, sure. I yeah. probably would have so, fired him up. Already, he ain't gonna get yeah. hurt because he's in your starting lineup. Right. I mean, it ain't, if you know, so if you don't have anybody else to play, it ain't like he. If you bench Barkley, you're gonna keep him from getting hurt. It ain't got nothing to do with how your fantasy team works. If you need him in your lineup, put him in there. Yeah. I mean, I was I was putting Daryl Henderson in. Sure. In, in lieu of exactly this week, I don't have Henderson. Right. I do have Eliza Mitchell, but Hendo's out. I mean, it seems if like, Eli- it's like if Eliza Mich- yeah, if Mitchell is healthy, I'd play Mitchell. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going Saquon. I would go Do Saquon it. over Mitchell. All right, AJ Brown, rough start to the to the year here. Hasn't looked great. Couple drops, big drops. AJ Brown's in my lineup. In your lineup. Week. Okay, start. so this is a start your studs. That's AJ. Sure. AJ Brown is a stud. Stud. And Every he's time. not hurt. And he's if not coming off an injury. Uh, he had so two knee. In, he had two knee surgery. He had surgery on each call. knee in the off season. So but it's, it's not, not like he's not not hurt. But like, good call. But he's not. He's not not out there. Not not getting targets. Or not not getting open. And it's, was getting peppered in the red zone, too. Like, he just yeah. it's just missing. The, the stat line isn't even that bad. It's like not great. It's like it's 14 just, and yeah. 8 or something. Like uh, He's in my lineup. Yeah. I'm not taking can't him out. Can't take him out. Because mm-hmm. as soon right. as you do, it's going to be two to three touchdowns. Good. Last like, one. Clyde Edwards-Alaire. <sighs> Second, I, third round draft pick. Same thing. I mean, if I got somebody, I feel, if I got Mitchell, I'm playing Mitchell over Clyde. Easy. Mm, easy? With yeah. The, even with a shoulder injury? Well, I mean, Clyde's got an ankle. He obviously ain't yeah. really performing on right now. I'm, I've got no problem putting Clyde on the bench for a couple of weeks. If Clyde's got him the Chargers this week. Let him let him play his way out of this injury. Might might not should be playing at all. I mean, the, the depth chart is not good for the Chiefs running backs. Yeah, it's not like they got an AJ Dillon and a Kylan Hill down there. Yeah, if they did, they probably wouldn't be playing Clyde Edwards on a bad ankle. I think I'm. I think I'm firing. They could up. pick up all kind of people if they wanted to. I think I'm firing up, up Clyde. The only thing that gives me pause. The, all the people the Ravens picked up. None of those are any good. Freeman was out there looking okay. One they could have given Freeman some. One good they run. They certainly weren't picking it, up. They weren't, run, they weren't going. All the running through backs players. will look better when the whole defense is trying to t- tackle Lamar first. It's I'm completely saying, different. The, the, his his injury was so early on in the preseason or off season that they could have they could have brought in so many dudes. There was no news on the injury, whether it, he was good, on track, behind, I mean, he's been setbacks, playing. none of he's that, been right? Playing. There was no news on him and no visits from all the free agent running backs available. So that tells me I, I'm not pinning it on him being unhealthy, I don't think, or them necessarily limiting him because he's hurt. It just hasn't worked out. Sometimes it doesn't work out. And this is an awesome buy-low opportunity. If you got somebody better – 
But I, I'm going to fire up Clyde. Who would be better? Would you play Miles Gaskin over Clyde? No. Mm-mm. Especially with Tua. With, if, I don't know what's going on with Miami if Tua's hurt. They, like a Zach Moss or a Singletary? Zach Moss did look a, and I mean, both so of those guys in spots. Not Singletary was slow. Busted off a bomb well, ass um, long. Who do, who, do, who do Bills playing this week? I don't even know. I'm probably playing. Just because just there's two of those guys, I'd play in Clyde over the, the coin flip of those cats. Oh, the, the, the Bills are playing somebody with a good defense. They're going to throw it a lot. Who are they playing? I, I have no idea. Um, yeah. Anyway, I, I, I think I'm mostly just firing up Clyde Edwards. Either. And see what happens. The only thing that gives me Bill's pause got Washington. is maybe a better front. Than, I mean, obviously not where they are, what we thought it would be. We've talked about that, but a good front. And I think Washington, I think Bill's throw it a lot more than run it this week against Washington. Go it's ahead. either going to be, we're showing a lot of faith in you and we're going to give you plenty of run here with Clyde Edwards, or we're going to kind of give you the mix in uh, Daryl Williams. Williams a little more and give you, you know, hey, you fucked up. And now you're you're on the back burner here. So I could see that kind of going either way. I'd have to have somebody pretty good. Uh, would you fire Mike Davis up over Clyde Edwards? Going against the Giants. No. Uh, if you want to get cute, man, I guess I could. But just because he had four points last week, Clyde, that is. Yeah. I can't get too mad at you, but I'm not going to do that. Yeah. All right. You want to get out of here, Big Co? We got the rookie report coming last. Yeah, we'll yep. take a break. All right. And we're back. Sands Big Co., but uh, we'll finish this thing up. With bye the, bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Went from tripod to bipod. So, uh, last. Sometimes you lose a leg. <laughs> sometimes. And he's, I mean, Lieutenant Dan Land lost both of them, and he was still a shrimp boat captain, or a first mate anyway. So, I mean. No desire to become a captain, but I'd rather just. <laughs> Know someone that has a boat? First mate. That's where it's at. I don't want to help that much. I got gas money, and I'll bring beers. I'll pick up cigs. Sammies. We'll bring, we'll bring whatever. Some Sammies. Sammies. Some Sandos. Sandos. Sando. <laughs> you got to have some food while you're out in the water. I'll pick up whatever the fuck you want me to pick up, man. Just don't make me help with a boat. Or drive. Oh, First of all, I got some pretty hard, fast rules about going out on boats with people, and I'm not going out with anybody that I don't thoroughly know very well, and I know how they're going to uh, be maneuver on the water here because uh, there's it's just there's too many uh, variables for me to be interested in some Yahoo with a boat club membership. Like, no thanks. Well, if it's a boat club membership, then you don't have to feel bad about ruining the boat. You have insurance. It's not about ruining the boat. It's about ruining me. Gotcha. Like, <laughs> Well, you need to get in before dark. Could give then you're sh- okay, I think, as long as you yeah. get in before dark. Mm, I've seen a whole. I've been the, the reason I have this rule is because when I first moved here, I was a part of two very poor journeys with two people who had no business operating a boat and had no idea what they were doing. They just had a decent amount of money, so it was like, this is the worst. I went on. A, I had a really poor experience with someone that does know what the fuck they're doing with a boat. They just drink too much and it got too dark. Mm. And it's like you gotta you gotta know when to hold them and know when to fold them. Yeah, but this was just more of a you're fucking my whole day up here with this dumb shit. <laughs> All right, let's get to some rookie recap. We gonna do it? We are gonna finish this off? Can we get through it? Let's, we got Big Co out of here, so maybe we can finish up in a timely manner. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it. Who we got? Rookie report. Javante, first on the uh, docket here. Brought him up earlier. Said he looked good. I had him on my Broncos little wrap-up of uh, ad expectations. 13 for 64. Had one reception. Just just looking great. You know, if you, if you have Javante and you didn't see the game, you might not love the stat line. Stat line's pretty good. The arch per carry's good, but you didn't get it very, you know, eight points or something like that in your lineup. You're not ready to start him, no. but you're getting what you want from him from a dynasty perspective. He looks the part. He looks like he did in college. He's great. He looks hard to tackle, just like he did in college. That's all I need to report about that rookie. Looks like a linebacker playing running back. And that's what that's he is. Because that's what he is. And, and you, if you drafted Javante Williams to be a starter, you were just misled the entire time. Anyway, well, you're you hoping. You, you knew you're you had hoping. to wait a year, and this is a great case scenario. You're getting to see him play very well and 
take a portion of a, of a locked in veteran who's also playing very well, who they could easily just say, hey, this guy's a veteran. We're just going to give him 20 carries and you're going to just work in here. You got 13 carries and, and, and he looks good. So you're you're excited about all the Javante William. I'd be I'd be trying to buy Javante sure. if I could. Big time. Some you, some way. You probably weren't drafting him to start him. I but think some people had delusions. M- maybe, of grandeur. maybe, but you knew that Melvin was a little older. You weren't sure if he was going to come out and look like vintage Melvin Gordon. He does get hurt sometimes, so you know a lot of Melvin haters out there. Melvin looks peak Melvin, but at the same time, Javante looks like what we wanted him to look like. Melvin's trying to get some more cash. Gave yeah, he well he he blew it the first time. He should have taken that ten million a year from the Chargers. Mm. But these boys should do whatever they can to get all the money they can. I'm for it. Uh, real quick, Pitts, 5 for 6, 73 yards, just taking another step forward as a rookie tied in. Damn near startable. I don't. I have. Get, I got him on one squad. I got Evan Ingram on that squad, so I've been forced to start him. Probably just going to keep rolling with Kyle Pitts and take what I can get got, in a rookie year. Got but no he's Pitts. showing you more. Yeah, this was a much better uh, showing, and, and, yeah, that was a startable effort. Uh, by by Pitts and I'm um, I'm in, kind of kind of just looks like a, a monster out there and give it a give it a year or two. Oh my god! I mean, I think by the end of the year it's going to be oh my god. So. Maybe I hope so. I'm down for it. I'm here for it. I got one share. Such a good receiver. So I think he might be the only name on on the list that we talked about last week uh, of the of the rest of these guys. The All right, the rookies. Well, Najee. Got to give a little tip of the cap to Najee. Wasn't the most fantastic stat line. Not a great yards per carry, but Jesus. If if a couple of those runs and a couple of those catches weren't like, oh, my God, that's Najee Harris. That's the player I saw in college just beast everyone that came in his way. They look really hard to tackle. They can catch the ball like a savant. Just, just loving what you saw from Najee this past yeah, week. Yeah, and maybe – Even there's some disgruntled Najee owners possibly because we've seen it with a with a JT and we've seen it with multiple other guys where impatient ten for thirty eight and then yeah he did he ended he got the touchdown for for you like if you know I'd love to see Clyde getting five five targets and five receptions and and maybe fourteen fifteen carries Najee looks great the offensive line is something new that wasn't great last year it's not great again but we kind of knew that coming in. Yeah, I I would assume I would have thought that you're going to see more than ten carries every week, um, but the five for five was nice. He looks great. If there's any impatience for any Najee owners and somebody who just thinks that maybe it's just not going to be as good as they wanted it to be, which everybody expects whoever they took first to just be the all of a sudden coming in and scoring, you know, leading the league in fantasy points, you know, not realistic expectations. But Najee looks very very strong uh, when he does get the opportunities. Uh, to really shine, so uh, yeah. Much like, like Javante is doing exactly what he did in college, as far as how he looked on the field, beasting other players. Like that's has his skill set has translated to the NFL. We knew it was going to happen, but it's just great to see it. Right, it's great to see it. Elijah Moore, next guy on the got list, on the, got on the field. Finally, got got some targets, got some got some yards. Had uh, had. Four caught four targets, or sorry, caught four of eight targets for forty-seven yards. Elijah Moore just still no Crowder, so and not the, sure how that'll shake out. Played the Pats, probably locking down Corey Davis pretty good. Kind of, kind of could anticipate that happening, but just good to see Elijah Moore produce for you. Kenny Gainwell, we did bring him up last week. Six attempts for fourteen yards, uh, caught two of three balls for eight, another eighteen yards, and a two-point conversion. Uh, not startable at this point, but he has jumped Boston Scott. I don't think he's got, touched the ball at all. He's number two on that depth chart. Miles Sanders didn't have a great game. It was a defensive battle there. Uh, I, I think, you know, more opportunity to maybe get some gain well. It's just another week of him showing NFL talent on the field and getting run, being lined up all over the place, and jumping depth charts. It's just Trying to keep you up on all the progress. Michael Carter, baby. Speaking of jumping depth charts, Tevin Coleman did not get as much run. I don't think snaps wise or touches wise as time on Ty Johnson and Michael Carter. I think Ty Johnson might have got out carried him by one. I think he might have got twelve carries. I think he got twelve, but Michael Carter goes eleven for fifty nine yards. 
adds on another two receptions for 29 yards. And uh, just, just getting more run week two. You like to see that. First, the Pats getting beat up. No Makai Becton on that line. He's going to be out for a little while. He's a he's a all-world left man-eating left tackle. Um, so they're missing him right now. But, you know, pretty good showing by Michael Carter. Um, you know, again, stock up. If there's any reason that you can go buy any Michael Carter, let me get him. Sure. Pat Fryermuth, your boy. Oh, Patty. He was... The stat line doesn't do it justice. Only four for four for 36 yards, but it seemed like it was more than that. It seemed like they were crucial, like third down targets. Like Ben was like looking at him when he needed a play, and there were no catches by Ebron. I think he only dropped his only target. So Fryermuth has jumped Ebron already. Uh, Ebron was banged up coming into the week. They weren't sure if he was going to play, so that may, may have something to do with it. Okay, right. I didn't hear any of that during the telecast. It was more like he like they like what they see from Fryermuth. Uh, they, they certainly do. And Ben, ben has cer- a connection. Ben certainly likes it, and we saw the connection in the preseason in the red zone. Uh, so yeah, you were just you were the only one of us preaching Pat Fryermuth. Fryermuth, baby, and it looked like looked like that was coming to fruition. Let's go. Anthony Schwartz didn't have a great week too, but with Jarvis going on IR, Odell, who knows. Donovan's people Jones. I don't know who they're going to throw it to. One of those three tight ends. Anthony Kareem Schwartz Hunt. had a good week one. Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt. Kareem but Hunt. you're Kareem liking Hunt. your Anthony Schwartz uh, stock should be on the upward. I mean, yeah, he, he, that's probably a fourth round pick, late late fourth rounder. Uh, sure. So, or maybe even a, a, a free a agent free pickup agent after staff. the draft. So, yeah, of course you're excited about that. Had, had a nice week one. Week two was meh. But we talked a little Elijah Mitchell already. Uh, he had 17 for 42. Only had two for two, but but did show something on the receiving end. Had a nice screen play. Uh, he can catch up in the air whether or not that injury is going to hold him out or not. His story is developing, but he was the main guy in that game, getting most of the run. Eagles defensive front put up a good a good stop, but uh, still liking what you're still feeling good about Elijah Mitchell. Uh, Terrace Marshall only three for three. For 17 yards, uh, Brandon Zil, I don't even know that is, Zilstra, Zilstra, had had a bigger game, had three for 44 and a touch. You haven't seen Terrace Marshall do what he did in the preseason. He was lighting the world on fire in the preseason, and it hasn't been coming to fruition in the, in the regular season. It's been all DJ Moore, but you got to like, you got to like this window Oh, to go purchase I'm Terrace. Throwing as much dollar bills and, and whatever it takes to try to go wean uh, Terrace Marshall from somebody's team now. A couple wean weeks. them slowly off. Couple couple of uh, couple of teams. Uh, we drafted some late leagues where, where Terrace ended up going pretty high. So you're probably not going to get those guys to, to give in. But, but anybody who maybe drafted in the second round on the Terrace Marshall guys uh, either way I'm gonna go throw feelers out and try to get Terrace because there's there's a there's something there and it just hasn't been on the field in the regular season right now uh and and really it's really mostly just been DJ Moore as the receiving factor on this team right now Robbie Anderson's kind of an afterthought and of course CMC being the focal point when healthy so I think Terrace at some point um you, you got to buy into but you know they did re- just re-sign Robbie Anderson for for another two years and and DJ Moore. Um, he didn't get a new contract, but he's he's got no. Be. I think he got his fifth year option picked up, but he doesn't have a new contract. So I mean, but the, the way the, he's playing right now and the way they're targeting the shit out of him, like could be in for something there. Could easy lock it up. So, but I think I think they're like. There was another wide receiver getting production besides DJ Moore and and uh, Robbie Anderson. Robbie, so and there was three thousand yard receivers last year in this Joe Brady led offense. Also without Christian McCaffrey, though. Fair, that's a fair point. So maybe that maybe that needs, but but Terrace should work his I'm way. I'm still in there. buying the talent of Terrace. Sure, so it doesn't matter to me. Big I'm time. Just, I'm going ahead and getting in, and I'll figure it out later. Let me let me just put him on the team and throw him down there. Should we take it to the most valuable rookie of the week? 100%. Let's get to the MVR. Rondale Moore. Rondell, baby. Love to see it. Now, I was uh, probably more camp terrace than Rondell. I was, felt pretty confident about taking those. But, you know, right now, Rondell is easily in your starting lineup um, or at least can make a case to get in your starting lineup. I don't know if I would be starting him, but definitely 
way closer to your lineup than Terrace Marshall is right now. Uh, so and, sure. and Rondell just looks as advertised. He looks like what you again, like you were talking about with those other rookies, what you were getting and and looking at with the tape and the athletic testing and all those things. Does when the skill him, set translate to the NFL? It absolutely does with Rondale Moore. Right. He is on he, the yak. It's the yak. It's I the mean, short. The it's the Cardinals short. Now, right now. There was a long run. The Cardinals and was a right scramble now are play. Just, you know, Max Williams is getting seven. Everybody's Everyone's eating, eating right now. And and will that keep up? If two, Kyler TBD, Murray, if Kyler TBD, Murray's health keeps up, it will. I would. Imagine. I would assume I so as well. See it going anywhere as long as Kyler Murthy. Murthy, as long as Kyler Murray can run around and is healthy, I don't see why this can't continue. I don't know that I'm trying to fire up Rondale. I don't necessarily need to fire him up, you know, yeah. if he didn't uh, have that, that was, long touchdown play. I mean, he still did have – he still had eight targets, caught seven of them, 114 yards, one touchdown. There was obviously that big play on the scramble drill where – it was kind of busted, and then you saw the acceleration and the speed that this man has and the game-breaking ability. Uh, no rushes on the year, kind of weird, and did only play 46% of the snaps. So that's highly efficient. I could see that maybe not sustaining, but it's just you see what his, what his skill set is, what he does best is working at the NFL level, and it works in this offense, and it works for this quarterback, and yes, there are a lot of mouths to feed. A.J. Green is resurging. Christian Kirk is back from the dead. They have one of the best wide receivers in Nuke. They have two capable backs, one of which is a really good receiving back. Yeah, well, that's why I think that's why you haven't seen any gadgety running stuff out of them because they have a guy sort of like that in Chase Edmonds, and then they have another banger in, in Connor. So, But he does offer some rushing-type upside with these end-arounds. You're going to see it come, and it happened in the preseason, and they were using it just to get their offense started. They were getting 8, 9, 10 yards out of those rushing plays in the preseason from Ron Moore. I would expect to see that come up, but, I mean, you just – you couldn't ask for anything more from Rondale Moore. And I, I teetered on whether I wanted Terrace or Rondale. At the end of the day, I was bummed to come out of my drafts with no Rondale. I did pick him up in a in a in an eight man league I'm in with my wife, you know, just to have one stupid share of Rondale. I don't need to start him in that league, but just love having a little bit of him because I yeah. love him so much and to see him come out and play this way. MVR, baby. Yeah, I traded, I traded two. Chase Edmonds straight up for uh, Rondell Moore. Yeah? In, uh, Fuck in yeah. That, so, that just, positional just scarcity. To, 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 get a, to get a piece uh, you know, and just see how it goes. That's a fair trade. And, that's, uh, that's a risk almost on your part to and trade I, somebody who's good Chase for guy. a rookie. I've but really, really gone to bat for him. I think he's I think he's a really solid player, but I just wanted a little Rondell Moore. And, Where, what uh, league was that? Uh, the OG league. Son of a bitch. 2-1. Or two, two. So you traded for the pick and then took Rondell, right? Terrace went like one six in that league mm-hmm. or something. That was a late. This was a late August draft. Late draft, so late rookie draft. Wanted That's to get a piece baby. of Rondell. Got a piece of Rondell. Had to use Chase to get there. Um, well, well, wasn't sure what I, I like Chase a lot for this season, but wasn't sure what the future would hold for him uh, as far as Arizona and all that kind of stuff. But it, it looks like he's a really good, strong fit for there, so he could resign. Um, I just I hope Rondell can like you said hyper efficient right now with what's going on. I hope as the season goes on he'll maybe carve out a little more consistent uh role of of being like I, he needs to be on the field always. I mean, I think he led the team in targets this past yeah, week. Yeah, 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 just I would like to I would like to see him be on the field. Uh, I would expect for, those snaps to go up. Uh let's see had five targets in week 1, caught four of them for 68 yards. Targets went up. He looks great. Scored so. 11 and 24 in week one and two. So, yeah. Loving that. Loving that. I mean, I, I misspoke earlier by saying you're firing him up, but you're, um, I, I don't need to get him in my lineup. Certainly worse either. options. I don't feel yeah. the need to, but if I have to, I don't feel terrible about it. If yeah, I'm you get some bye week and an injury action. Oh, sure. We're in week two. Once we start hitting injuries and bye weeks, you're probably going to want some Rondell Moore yeah. in your lineup, if I had to guess. All right, well, let's close up shop. Let's get out of here. Yeah. Uh, remember to thrive and thrive heavily this weekend using promo code the FFD in all caps. Get 100% uh, match on your deposit. And uh, really fun game over there. So go ahead and thrive. The FFD. Right there. You see it. 
Thrive Fantasy in any of your app stores or play stores. They'll, so match, you, and, they'll match you up to 100 bucks. Go ahead and hit that and then help Free your boys money. out. You know, you throw in 10 bucks, you can get 20 and, and uh, go play in some contests, have some fun, doing some player prop stuff on the big dogs. You don't have to... Uh, you don't have to bet on the Mike Davises. You can bet on the Christian McCaffreys and the Josh Allens and the, it's and more the big fun. boys. So uh, go check them out. Of course, come check us out. Subscribe, uh, like, comment below with uh, you know trades and anything else you Rate might want to Rate my trade, talk about. hashtag flexual production. Yeah, come get it. Comment, comment, comment. Appreciate you guys. All right. We'll see you next week.